gentlemen, now it is time for our tech talk on unlocking the moment of yes in the BFSI industry. Well, we're joined by our eminent speaker, Sridhar S, Vice President, Managed Services Cloud, Hosting and Security, Tata Communications Limited. Well, Sridhar is a technology veteran with three decades of expertise in the IT industry. He's held several leadership roles in blue chip companies such as Dell, IBM, Intel, and HCL and has also served in India, Asia, and US markets throughout his career. Thank you so much, Sridhar, for joining us. With this, the stage and stream is all yours. Over to you. Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope all of you are safe and fine and your families are fine during these tough times. Thank you for sparing the time to be with us uh, for this session. Um, my name is Sridhar, as she mentioned, and I lead the cloud and security services businesses for Tata Communications. Uh, over the next 15 to 20 minutes, what I intend doing is to just give you an, an outline of uh, what sort of a role technology is playing and what can we do now, what is the way forward as we begin to bring in and embed uh, more of technology and digitalization into all the operations. In fact, you, you heard in the previous panel about uh, the technological developments that are impacting us. And I hope to, I hope to just give some uh, a substance to the whole thinking with some of the slides that I have. Uh, let me let me just project my screen now so that uh, it aids my talk. So I hope my uh, screen is visible. And uh, let me begin with uh, the first slide. So this is this is the the ecosystem of which many of you are a part, and most of you are uh, involved in this in some form or the other. So we've got a range of uh, uh, presence of banking and financial institutions, and which just keeps getting augmented with the advent of a lot of the, the new age, uh, new age uh, banks like your payment banks and your small finance banks in addition to the traditional public sector, private sector and the global banks that we had. And what is also adding to this ecosystem is you see at the right at the bottom, the 2,100 plus fintech companies to which India is, uh, is the home to. And we are, we are now beginning to see a lot of uh, technology getting embedded into many of the banking operations and which are getting, uh, getting enabled. So I, it, it has only got accentuated with this pandemic situation. And I wanted to pick up this slide, which is from a McKinsey report of last year. They talked about what is the consumer acceptance on the process simplification, as well as the utilization and leveraging of digital. So as you can see, this is a global report. It does have a representation of India as well. But suffice to say that being a global report, it, it is fairly representative of the population and it will impact uh, and it will be relevant for India as well. If you look at the left side of the slide, it talks about the banking preference across different age groups for the different categories of transactions. The first block is what, uh, what you see as everyday transactions, which is your day-to-day -day banking operations, as an example. The second one is on the, uh, the simple needs, which could be in terms of uh, maybe a loan or something like that. And the third one could be on certain complex activities. So as you see here, the acceptance of these methods for these requirements is fairly secular across all the age groups with very little to choose from across the different age groups, which means for the different types of needs, the acceptance levels of technologies across different age groups of people is fairly consistent. And this is a global statement I'm reminding you, but definitely it is applicable for India because we see these being adopted in large measure nowadays. And in India, you've got a huge uh, uh, digital divide, the, the urban and the rural, and even there, we find a lot of adoption of the technological framework for these purposes. So that's on the left side of the chart. On the right side of the, of the slide, what you see is retail banks thinking on the location of work. The x-axis shows the extent of physical presence, and the y-axis shows criticality of the ongoing transactions. And this report goes on to say that many of the activities here right at the bottom will probably not need the kind of physical presence as it was before. And these are the kind of transactions because the criticality is high and the continuous physical presence is high. These kind of operations will perhaps continue to remain on the on-site, on-premises kind of a work. So as an example, you see core operations, which is payment processing, will require some level of presence there. But as you see at the bottom here, selective middle, middle management roles can happen pretty much remote. As an example, <coughs> Tata Communications, we moved from, uh, from a 3 or a 4% uh, work from home to a 99% work from home at the stroke of the button last year uh, when the when the lockdown started. 
And today we're all comfortable, we're all working from homes and we're able to accomplish things. And most importantly, we're able to reach out to our customers and we're able to convey the value proposition. So I think this is applicable across all industries and it is being accepted. So suffice to say that from the, the takeaway for me from this slide is that it is fairly accepted across all age groups and it is possible to divest some of the functions from a traditional on-premises operations. Now let's go to the, the, next, uh, the next slide. This talks about in the industry, now, how does this change the way business is being done? And we picked up a few pillars here. The first one talks about transitioning the offline processes to online. This includes digitization of some of the manual processes. It includes things like, for example, onboarding new customers or being able to handle your processes. This is the first one. The second one, the moment you make it available online, it is possible for you to bring in self-services as well, where the customer at the click of a button is able to accomplish the tasks without the kind of assisted mode in which they are working today. And as you begin to allow that to happen, various different distribution partnerships begin to happen where today is the world of aggregation, whether it is in terms of your shopping or in terms of uh, uh, buying groceries and vegetables or maybe even ordering for food. Today is the age of aggregators where aggregators are able to bring in all the available menu cards on a single platform and you are able to place your order through the single platform. So today you, you're beginning to see a lot of aggregators in in, in in the banking segment as well, where a host of insurance policies are available for the users to go and pick and choose from. A host of bank account deposits are available. A host of mutual fund opportunities, uh, options are available. And you're able to pick and choose from them in this, uh, in this uh, aggregation model. So the different types of distribution enablement that you need to provide also begins to, begins to uh, impact the, the business model. The next one is about digitalization for a seamless customer experience. The moment you bring self-service, the moment you bring hands-free aggregation kind of uh, services, automatically you've got to look at providing the right kind of customer experience because traditionally we are used to somebody, uh, somebody's presence right next to you being able to take you through a model, a method by which uh, we are able to choose. And the person does in a very, very assisted kind of a mode and they give a very, very personal experience. Now, in a digital mechanism, how do you ensure that the personal experience does not get impacted? Imagine a relationship banker, instead of coming to the drawing room of your house or in the, in the, in the conference room of your office where you, you happen to meet him that, that afternoon, instead, if the person is able to reach out through a digital method and is able to provide you the kind of bank uh, loan for your housing requirement or a vehicle loan, et cetera, that sort of a user experience to be able to provide become important. And lastly, in all this, the safety and security becomes a, a primary importance. And so to enable this, what is happening? Uh, I just wanted to take this, uh, the anatomy of the banking and financial services institutions as was picturized in one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, reports where it talked about how the enablement on digitalization is moving inward across the concentric circles. The third party providers, the external ecosystem was earlier available and they were connecting to the banking infrastructure. At the core, you have your core, which is maybe your treasury or your, your customer data, or for example, it could be your core banking applications, et cetera. That continues to remain in your safe preserve, the sanctum sanctorum. But the subsequent layers in between that to the end customer, whether it is the omni-channel as we call it today, whether it is internet or through mobile app or through whatever other methods, assisted methods, the risk management portfolio, payment, payment today across different payment gateways is now getting enabled. A lot of fintech companies are in this space. Customer management, providing the analytics platform are available in this. So what's happening is we're beginning to see a lot of uh, you know, innovation happening in these areas, which are enabling the customers to, to reach out to the banks in more ways than one. And that to be able to provide the uniform experience becomes the challenge. Now, what are the tools and techniques available today? And I think this is a slightly busy chart. I want you to focus on the, the data points on the left side in conjunction with the, the uh, tools available, which we have tried to pictureize on the right side. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, AI, ML is being very easily used nowadays, but the impact that it can create with the newer technologies uh, uh, utilization in customer management is immense. It's going to make uh, customer understanding a lot, lot better, and it is going to enable banking companies to provide far more focused services to the to the customers blockchain technologies is going to enable the the leverage of a larger uh, pool of uh, uh, organizations or ecosystem players to be able to leverage customer data in a far more productive way big data analytics is going to make it a lot better 
for us to for us to attack the customers in a very very appropriate manner to be able to do all this enabling a proper api gateway system where your application life cycle is managed from the cloud to the continuous delivery to the orchestration layer to the api gateway layer to be able to provide this kind of a stack for you to enable the application modernization requirements because over time as you see on the left side open banking infrastructure is going to take over and it talks that by 2026 the global market is about 43 billion that means a very well orchestrated open platform open banking platform which is api driven is extremely important enabler for the banking operations of the future second ai ml technologies it talks about how by 2023 ai and hyper automation investments will double that means the technologies which enable the business to understand the customer buying behavior the propensity to invest or identify maybe fraud detection and other mechanisms becomes very very important and adopting these technologies you see a closer time frame of 2023 which is given but the last block on the right you see the cloud enabled platforms is is a here and now it's a by 2021 statement where enabling the cloud it's not about which cloud but it, not when cloud but which cloud and how much of it do i embed into my infrastructure that is coming into play today so having a scalable and agile a secure cloud platform is extremely important and the challenges that come with it in terms of the identity the endpoints the data management and the application uh, integration and security of the application on the developer platform all of them give sleepless nights to the cios and ceos this brings me to the to the point of where the concerns are you have a lot of legacy infrastructure how do you migrate the legacy and old monolithic applications to a more uh, like like we talked about the open banking federation that is going to come about in the future the second one the moment you do all that comes the, the challenges of security we we've, we've seen stories many of them about how the banking operations were completely crippled and brought to a halt because of some some attacks here and there and how it is important for us to ensure that the customer data is not leaked out by any methods third is about the difficulties migration by itself moving from a legacy platform to a newer platform without impacting the customer operations because customer expect today today anytime anywhere from any place kind of a kind of a performance and that means the right kind of connectivity as you see here in the fourth uh, point at the bottom then comes the most important compliance now whether it is india or whether it is uh, the international uh, compliance requirements the india's private uh, data protection bill is also is also pretty much uh, pretty much in the era of the corner and we are going to see a lot of uh, implications of that in the way customer data is being handled stored where is uh, you know data going to be resident how is it going to be accessed how is it going to be leveraged all of that will come into play gdpr already has created a framework for us for for us who engage with european organizations so compliance is to all these kind of frameworks and of course there are the generic ones like pci dss soc3 compliance which become important in the, in terms of the banking operations and lastly technology is always ahead and skills and people always plays a catch up just that some of us who are in the provider industry are able to deliver people a little better than those in the practicing industry like yourselves so maintaining these operations efficiently and cost effectively to ensure that the skills are almost always available becomes an important concern and how do you go about designing the infrastructure so i'm trying to i'm trying to bring this down from what are the elements available to exactly what do we deal with what are the challenges and finally how do we design it so I'm, this is this is probably a, an important part of the uh, the representation here the banking landscape we have just taken a very representative landscape here in terms of the core banking operations which are the core other services which come on top of it the analytics which you need to perform and the third party integration you can relate it this to the concentric circle slide that i showed earlier and how the platform requirements change with each one of these requirements somewhere you need uh, you need the vdi platform to 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 enable uh, users to leverage the data but not be able to download and give the protections just simulate the virtual desktop uh, to to have a, a content delivery network the microservices architecture which enables the creation and and uh, of the open banking platform and be able to take the application from a monolithic uh, on premises platform to the cloud the ai ml analytics we talked about that api gateway services and of course security these are the platform services requirements and bringing it down to specific on infrastructure some of these applications where they could be resident wherever but the low latency performance may be required second rbi has regulated a three way dr which is a, a primary infrastructure a near dr and a far dr which could be from a different seismic zone so that the the user the bank is completely protected and that enables uh, the requirement of 
container and cloud services, security services, etc. So we're just trying to break this down into the specifics of the platform as well as the infrastructure requirement. Thinking through all this, what we did at Tata Communication is to create the ISO financial cloud, which adheres to all we talked about as the design elements in the previous play page. And we provide even application and a container as a service format in the in the uh, the entire uh, offerings from from us and right up to the API gateway layer we provide to you so that all that the bank has to do in terms of working is just the application lifecycle management at the application layer working by yourself or from the from the application provider that you might have we have a three way dr established we've got primary data centers and disaster recovery centers at different um, uh, seismic zones which enables the operations to be to be sufficiently insulated from any uh, any natural impact, natural calamities that could happen in one or the other geography. So we could we could probably have a more detailed session with some or all of you as as per uh, the time permits. But suffice to say that this this is something that we have, we have recently launched as a sort of a community platform, which is available to some of our financial services customers. And this is compliant to most of the re uh, regulatory requirements that are there. I talked about the PCI DSS, the certain SOC one, two, and three. We are STQC audited. This is METI and panel, METI certified. We are cybersecurity incident reporting certified, RBI and IRDA compliant, and a host of other ISO and process related certifications. We our our managed services processes are also CMMI level three certified today. So we provide a comprehensive solution which is also certified and compliant with the industry regulations and requirements. Beyond this, we offer on a, a la carte manner also. This one slide gives you a view of how right at the bottom of the infrastructure from the underlay, which is the network, the various flavors of network to all forms of cloud to providing a, a wide a wide bouquet of security services from a network security to security on the cloud towards managing your vulnerabilities with the right kind of threat intelligence feed and threat intelligence platforms to providing you the right kind of risk and compliance guidelines and with the diverse presence on the cloud and the wide IT estate how we provide you the cloud security posture management, which provides you the visibility and governance of all that is that is available and running on the infrastructure, ensuring that everything is well protected. And as a as a as a, a CIO or a CISO, you are able to get a full view of exactly what is happening across the network. And then the professional services topping it up, taking it all the way up to managed services and keeping it running. This is a very, very comprehensive view of all that we deliver across the cloud security and network platform. And from the vantage point where we sit, we see that this is a very, very, I would say, uh, a conjoined kind of a discussion where the moment you talk about cloud first uh, uh, design, automatically it triggers a requirement on a network redesign because you're suddenly moving from a point to point connectivity to an internet connectivity and anytime anywhere connectivity and then it opens up a plethora of questions regarding security am i ready am i going to be ready etc so we see this as a very very contiguous kind of a discussion that enables us to provide with a, as we call it a single hand to shake so that you as a customer are able to to sit back and relax and ensure that this is there however it is a shared responsibility for both of us. So while you relax, you obviously continue to be vigilant on this. And with the support of customers such as yourselves, we have won a lot of awards and accolades from the likes of Gartner and Frost and Sullivan, from publications such as uh, ET uh, Telecom and, and from industry bodies such as NASCOM, as well as with uh, uh, technology partners such as Red Hat and VMware. So we boast of a host of uh, uh, these awards and these are not a point in time. We have been securing some of these awards over successive years, thanks to the support of uh, and, 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 the, and the continued uh, uh, faith that customers such as you have placed in us, which just makes us more responsible to continue to be worthy of uh, such, a, such a faith. So with this, I just wanted to close this by saying, this is the moment of yes for the BFSI industry and we at Tata Communications are ready. And please, please make the time to catch hold of the nearest Tata Com representative so that you are able to get a view of all that I talked about in the last 15 minutes. Hopefully this was useful to you and look forward to having a conversation with you. Thank you very much for the opportunity and have a nice day ahead. So thank you so much, Mr. Sridhar for joining us and talking on the topic unlocking the moment of yes in the BFSI industry.